In this lesson, we will learn about screen scraping. We will use the most common screen scraping activity, and that is get text. Our mission today is that we have an Excel sheet with two columns, company and CEO. The company column that is already filled in with five company names, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. And we want to use a Google search, and then we want to use the get text to find the corresponding CEO. Let's see how that is done. First, we can go to Google, and then we can, for example, search for Microsoft CEO, like this. This one will get us the Microsoft CEO here, and what we want to get is this text using the screen scraping. And then again, if we will do this, we want to do the Apple CEO and all get all five companies. So we can close down the Excel sheet, then we can go to UI path. And again, I will recommend you to do the operations with me, as you will learn a lot from that. If there's something that you will not understand, then just rewind the video and do it twice. So we want to use the get text. Let's see how that is working. So find a get text and drag it in. Then we can indicate what we want to get on the screen. So click here. And what we want to get here is the Tim Cook, right? That's the Apple CEO. So we want to get this. And then we can output it to a variable. That is a string variable up here. So you go up here, press Control K, and we can just call this str CEO. You can call it whatever you want. And we can go down to variables, and we can see that we indeed had created a string variable down here. However, say that we uh, will search for the Google CEO. You can see that this changes. Then we can go down to this get text, and this get text won't work. Because if we click edit the selector, you can see that it is red. And what could be wrong? Well, we can see that when we created our selector, the Apple CEO is here. And then this number could be a problem. So we made a static selector, and we will now see how we can make a dynamic selector. Let me close this. Remember, this is the Apple selector, so we can open up a notepad. Some of them good to do. So this one was the Apple, and then we can choose to make a, and we can indicate element here, and we can get the Google uh, CEO selector. So click the Sundai Pikai, and this is our Google. Then we can go back to Notepad and paste it in below. You can clearly see it here. We have this uh, Apple and Google, that's the static part. And then uh, this number is the same here. However, it can be different. So what we want to do here, simply just uh, to take the Google CEO and then replace it with an asterisk. And what we want to do here in the, the uh, number here, we want to have an asterisk here as well. This selector will work, can validate it, and it will work for all our CEOs. So that's how you create a dynamic selector. That is a very important concept of UiPath. So now we get the text, we can make a right line to have our text written out. And in case you have forgot what you called your variable, you can just press Control space. That is the str CEO. We can now run it to get our CEO, that is Sundai Pikai in this case. We can click the output and we can see that it indeed is Sundai Pikai. We can verify that it is indeed dynamic by changing this to Facebook CEO and then run the workflow again. Here. We go down to output and that is Mark Zuckerberg. So now we have succeeded, succeeded in creating a dynamic selector. We could create our entire workflow. Let us just uh, delete these things here. And we can see here that we still, if we click variables, we still have the str, str CEO variable. We will use that. So what we want to do now is that we want to read the Excel sheet. So find an Excel application scope, drag it in. The workbook path, well, I placed mine here. So shift, right click, copy as path. And then we can uh, either put it in here as a hard-coded value. However, it's always best practice to create a variable because we can use this a lot of places in our workflow and this could change. So we will put it in down here. So we'll create a variable. We can call this str Excel path. 
and then we can just paste in the value here. Because now what we can do here is that we can put it in up here, SDR Excel path, and this variable that holds a value, so that will just be opening this particular one here. And if we change it, we can just change it down here in the variable manager. So we won't have to find it in a complicated workflow. This workflow will not be that complicated, but I just wanted to show you the best practice. Then the visible. Well, we will not have a visible setting because we will not see the, we don't wish to see the operations at least. Then we want to have the read range. Make sure it's from the Excel activities. There's two. So drag in the read range. We want to read the sheet one. If that's your sheet name, make sure it's the one. And then we want to output it to a data table. So go over here. Control K. We can call this DT CEO. Like this. And you can see it down here in the variables that we have created a data table called DT CEO. A data table, as we have previous, previously mentioned, that is nothing more but just an Excel sheet in the memory. It will look like ex an exact copy of the Excel sheet, except that it will just disappear when the robot stops. But having it as a data table, it will enable us to quickly manipulate the data. So now we have gotten our read range, we have the data, then we can open up a browser. And what you will need to do here is that we will say open browser, drag it in here, and we want to use Chrome. So make sure you go to uh, Home and then Tools and enable the Chrome extension here. So that's the one here, and we can go back. Again, up here in browser type, choose the Chrome. So the URL, well, that's just Google, but let's just copy it for all sakes. So copy the Google address. And then again, we will create a variable instead of hard coding it in here. So this one is the str URL. And then we can paste it in over here. Now remember to put in quotation marks. We always need quotation marks with a string here, like this. Then we can just say str URL. So now we have opened up our browser. Then we can do a for each row on our data table. What a for each row does is just that it loops through each row of the data table. So find a for each row here, drag it in. We want to loop through each row of our newly created data table up here. So for each row in, then you can press control space and choose the DTCO like this. And now we can start to do a Google search and it's almost always best practice just to have a, a starting instance of Google. So whenever we start, we want to have the start page and we'll get that by simply just having a navigate to drag it in here. And now we can use our str URL. That is the URL variable because that was Google. Remember? So we just, now we just navigate to Google. That's fine. Then we want to do a search and we'll do that by having a type into here, drag it in. We will indicate where we want to type in. So click indicate and you can now see that you can select the UI element here. That's the search field like this. What do we want to type in? Well, we want to type in what, what's ever in the Q and row of the data table. Remember our data table, let me open up the CEO Excel sheet again. Our data table will look like the ex, ex, an exact copy of this. So, and it will loop through each of these row, not the header. So when we're here, we want to type in Microsoft, that is from the company column. And then when we have got the Microsoft CEO, then we want to add it to here. So what we do to refer to where we want to type in, that was from the company column. So we say the Q and row, that's row. Then we want to get the column name, that is item, parentheses, quotation marks. Then we just say company. And because it's from Excel, we will, it will be an object, so we'll say to string, like this. So now we have our company typed in, and then we want to have a CEO. So we want to have the company and then CEO. What we do here is that we say plus, then we want to have quotation marks, a blank, and CEO. Then finally, our, at last, we want to do an enter, or we could use a click on the search here. Let's just pick an enter. So choose the plus sign here, let me repeat it, choose the plus sign here and click enter. So now we have made our Google search, then we can have the get text. So let's find a get text, drag it in, indicate it. So, and now we just need to 
before we indicate it, we need to do a search. So let's just pick the Google CEO. That doesn't matter what search you did, just do a CEO search. And now we can click indicate here. We want to output it to a variable. And remember, we have our str CEO here. So we will, in the output, we will just type in str CEO like this. So now we have gotten our text from up here. We just need to make this um, activity, this get text selector dynamic. So click edit the selector. And what you can see here now is that we only have the um, this one to make dynamic. So what we do here is that we'll just make this number dynamic. Remember it was 65, four, and now this will work. So that's it. Then we can minimize this. And what we need to do is that we got the text here. Now we just need to assign uh, the, the value that we got to the CEO column of our data table. What we do here is that we will find an assign. So search for an assign and drag it in. How do we address the um, CEO column? We'll do that by simply just saying again, row item. Item is the column, remember. Then CEO. This one will uh, type something in in the current row in the CEO column. What do we want to type in? Well, that was just the text that we got up from up here, str CEO. Now we have successfully created our loop. Then we can just write uh, the data table back into Excel. That means updating it. Make sure you do it outside for each row, but still in this do from the Excel application scope. We'll do it in the end, like here. We will find a right range, sorry, here. Choose the Excel one here and then do it here. Where do we want to write to? We want to write and make sure it's outside the each row. Let me double check it, it is. So where do we want to write? We want to write to the sheet one, that's fine. I always just delete this range here. We want to add headers. And what data table do we want to write in? That is of course, just our DTCO. So that's it. We can close down this Google and we can verify that we indeed had created a working workflow. So now I click run. We will open up Google Chrome in a few seconds. Here. Then we will start doing our searches. Microsoft CEO, that is Satya Nadala. Then we'll do our next search. Google CEO, and I won't have to repeat it right, but you can see it will do all our five searches. Then we just need to verify after we have done the last one, that was Amazon. When we have done this and the workflow has stopped, it will do that in a few seconds like this. We just need to verify that we have indeed updated our CEO. Like here, you can see that we have updated the CEO column. That's how you work with screen scraping and get text.